I just arrived in Edinburgh last night, so this is my first morning at the Edinburgh International Book Festival. And it's, it's lovely. I'm a little bit nervous about our talk, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, now I'm very much looking forward to it. I only arrived last night and I had a quick look around and I looked in the Spiegel tent at the Jura Unbound stuff. I'm doing, I'm doing something with that tonight. And uh, that, was, that was pretty scary because there's a proper like, crowd of actual adults in there who are expecting to be entertained. Um, but generally, I mean, it looks really great. This is my first book festival ever, actually, so I'm, I'm really excited. It's really nice that comics have their own strand in the book festival, and it looks like it's going to be really good. I've missed some of my favourite authors already, which is a, which is a shame, because I live in, near London, and so I, don't, I couldn't really come up for that long. But it's very heartening to see comics getting such a big spotlight in a proper serious literary festival. Yeah, and you hope that some people who maybe come to see, you know, Margaret Atwood or, or, or some literary author will think, oh, let's pop along and see one of those comic things and maybe, maybe get involved with it. So I think it's, yeah, it's really great. For me, everything starts in my sketchbook. I, um, I probably have a lot of work in my sketchbook, which never goes any further than that. And I, I try and use the sketchbook almost to talk myself into the idea and believe in it enough to put the work in to make it good. So I spend quite a lot of time sitting in my studio or in cafes or wherever, um, just doodling away in my sketchbook. I have a very boring looking sketchbook and most of my ideas are kind of scripted beforehand. So I have an idea which takes a lot of sitting around and thinking and, and writing scribbled notes. And then once I've got the idea, then I'll start sketchbooking it and, and drawing things. Um, and then I move into actually scripting it and dividing it up and planning it out. And a bit anal like that. Uh, I didn't realise how influenced I am by Gary Larson cartoons. And he's kind of, he's so, he's one of those cartoonists whose stuff is so kind of prevalent and popular throughout the 80s and 90s that everybody sort of stopped kind of noticing how brilliant it was. It really, really, really was very good. Asterix as well. I was obsessed with Asterix as a kid and I used to copy a lot of Asterix drawings and I think that probably seeped into my brain in a way that I didn't really realise I was learning how to make comics work um, without even realising it. Wow, I'm trying to think of a third one now because I, I would have said Asterix and Gary Larson. <laughs> um, uh, what did I, I, I really loved the drawings of William Heath Robinson, even though they're not comics. My dad had a, had a book of them, and I think just something about the clarity of his drawing really influenced me. Just the fact that he's drawn this crazy complicated machine, and it, it's such fun to look at it, but when you actually look at it, it really works, and you understand immediately how, how it works. And that's kind of what I think comics are a bit like, is a diagram to tell a story. And I yeah. think that his drawings have that, but they also have a kind of warmth and a, 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 a real beauty about them, and really understated. So yeah, as well as Gary Larson and Asterix, <laughs> I'd say William Heath Robinson. For me, definitely the most challenging part is the the, the telling stories part. I, since I was a small boy, all I've really, no, not all, I, I'm, I really love drawing and I can just sit and doodle all day long and it, it, I, it, I find it very pleasurable and enjoyable. And trying to corral those drawings into a story has definitely got more brain ache in it. And yet, that is also for me now the most satisfying part is is telling stories with pictures. So they can, it is a bit of a love-hate thing that I, I can just enjoy drawing, but then I have to push it into this form. But in the end, it, I think it's worth it for me. Yeah, I'm exactly the same actually. Um, I I first had my idea for my current book about about six months ago, and I've literally had about six months of plots working out and all that sort of stuff. And you can't, the thing about comics is you can't have too much plot because then it becomes like this happens, that happens, this happens, that happens, and you, people can't have conversations which flow naturally. So I do find plot, whilst you, and you need the structure, you need a plot and that sort of thing. I'd love to be one of these cartoonists that can just naturally kind of draw out a story and find out how it goes as it goes along, but I'm not one of them. So again, yeah, coming up with a story is, is really the hardest thing for me. 
Um, I think, yeah, stories are always going to be important to people and it, uh, probably the way we read changes, is probably the way we tell stories will change, certainly with technology it might do and there'll be lots of different ways and collaborative ways of telling stories. But at the end of the day, it's a way of working out, understanding the world and understanding your place in the world and what on earth is going on with things. And um, I think that's always going to be attractive to humans. I, I, I think it's just something in humans wants to tell stories. I mean, the thing with a comic is you can draw two pictures and people will try and connect those into a story. So it's, it's almost just people will do it no matter what. So, you know, you just need to kind of help them along when you're, when you're making them.